Hey, shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. This is your brother Kazaki. I, I want to talk about something. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I want to talk about something. Um, there is a uh, overwhelming um, revival of, and I'm going to use the political terminology that everybody uses, the uh, conversion of the so-called African Americans and blacks from the blue to the red, the left to the right, from liberal to conservative. And there are a number of uh, people, it's kind of interesting really, there are a number of people um, that have become representatives. It seems like that if you are a so-called black person who is converted to to the uh, to the conservative red white right wing side of the political uh, spectrum, that you are targeted and that they will grab and embrace you because apparently Trump's um, followers are monitoring uh, YouTube, and a lot of these people. Uh, are not politicians, never have been politicians. They uh, are in different walks of life, some journalists, uh, some people are just regular workers. And uh, um, one person, her, her, name, Cand her name is Candace, I can't uh, recall her last name, but she's been on Fox News Network, which is the, um, the right wing news media. And uh, Diamond and Silk. And so it seems like the more so-called black people who uh, embrace Donald Trump primary, not so much that they're converting from Democrat to Republican or converting from uh, from liberal to conservative, but just the fact, the mere fact that they embrace Donald Trump, they have become uh, spokespeople for the so-called uh, blacks. Now, here's what I want to throw at you, right? Somebody asked me a question. I, I was at a truck stop and brother kind of jumped me because I made some comments about Trump. And so he automatically went and assumed that I was a Trump supporter. I mean, that I was a Democrat because I attacked Trump. And so he, so he asked me, he said, well, what party are you with? And I said, I'm neither Democrat or Republican. I am not. Uh, a person who is pro party, right? Democrats have their have their things that they have done to uh, extenuate uh, life the way it is today for the so-called African Americans, the people of color, and so have the Republicans, right? Let us not forget, because um, the sister went on to say, Candace. And I, please, please forgive me if I if I can't um, remember. She's a young sister. She's like 29 or 30 years old, and from Connecticut, somewhere up there. You can Google her, and you'll find her. Just type in Candace. Uh, she goes around, and does like speeches and stuff. People hire her to come into speeches, right? So, but anyway, she made a statement that the Democrats were the the, the Democrats were the ones who sponsored the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan was the arm of the Democrats. Now you can go and Google that and you'll, you'll find different pros and cons about whether it was the Republicans, whether it was the Democrats, or whether it was a combination of both. You'll see different viewpoints, right? What I want to throw at you is this. Whether they were Democrat, Republican, or whatever party they were back in the days when they enslaved our people, they were unanimously involved in enslaving, in enslaving of our people. Whether it be Democrat, whether it be Republican, whether it be right wing, left wing, or anything in between, right? So to embrace a party is basically uh, saying that you are on whichever side of the, of the issue um, 
on the basis of what the party has done to our people, right? So therefore, I, when I deal with political uh, issues, I don't deal with parties. I deal with people and I deal with facts, right? And so uh, people say, well, why, what, what, what do you have against Trump? And my, my words about that is, is that Trump is not a fair person. Trump is pro-white, and the reason why I say he's pro-white, he is a white supremacist, is because the way in which he talks and deals with people of color. Anything that he has to say about people of color is negative, except if you're on his side. If you're on Trump's side, then, oh, you're a good person. But if you, if you challenge him or if you disagree with him, then you're a thug, you're a thief, you're an animal, right? And these are these are code words that we gotta look out for because people like Donald Trump and those that have his views have the same behavior. Now, what are you saying, brother? Okay, I'm not saying, I never have said, and I don't agree that all people, all white people are not racist, right? All white people are not bad, and all white people are not good. All Republicans are not bad. All Republicans are not good. All Democrats, et cetera, are not bad or good, okay? All black people are not good, and all black people are not bad. All black people are not thugs. All black people are not uh, welfare recipients, right? I've never been a welfare recipient. My family, I come from a historical family of people that work, right? Uh, our dependency is not on the Republican Party. It's not on the Democrat Party. Our dependency is on, I am a member of the Yah political party, right? I serve Yah, the Most High, creator of heaven and earth. His name is Yah, not the Lord and God. That's a whole nother lesson. But he has a name just like you and I have a name. Yah, why? Okay? Modern theologians say Yahweh. Okay? But what I want to offer is, is that Donald Trump is not our savior. And when, when Obama was the president, okay, many people looked to him as if he was our savior, expecting him to do the impossible, right? So we already know what the Bible says. We know who we are, and you may not accept that. You may not accept that the so-called African Americans and blacks are the true biblical Israelites according to prophecy, not that we hate anybody, not that we're saying, not that we're anti, anti-Semitic, which is no such word. The word is anti-Semitic. Right in Hebrew, the word is Shem. Right, um, so we are actually Shemitic, but I don't want to get off into that. I want to get back to what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, if you if anybody has any any, any questions or, or uh, want to want to try to understand what I'm saying about that, then you can send me an email to askmalachi at gmail.com. We can discuss it. I've done plenty of videos on it, but I want to get back to this thing about this great revival is happening. So, you can't demonize a whole party because of what a few people have done in the party, right? So, to demonize the Democrats, even if they were, I'll, I'll give you that argument, okay? If you want to say the Democrats was the ones that um, were the arm uh, the KKK was an arm for the Democrats, okay? If you want to say that, okay? Then that would make the Democrats uh, Confederate, right? Wouldn't it? Because the Confederates are the ones that believed in independency, that believed in separation, uh, the races to be separate. Democrats are all for, uh, and mostly, in, mo most of the Democrats that I, I have uh, viewed come in contact with in my personal life, as well as have researched and studied uh, across the globe, seem to be very much pro interracial mixing. 
but the Republicans are the ones, the ones that that have the Confederate flags, and, and I'm a truck driver, and I see them on the highway with their Confederate flag on the front of the grill of their trucks. They're the ones that um, are against integration, right? They're the ones that believe separate and equal, okay? Or is that or is that true? That's another lesson, okay? But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, <sighs> hear me out. This is to every black person, brown person, white person, or whatever. And we need to get away from this black and white because that's that is really a distraction. Black and white, right? There, people are from nations, not from colors, right? Africans have so-called black skin, but they are not the same as other tribal nations, Ghanaians. Uh, Nigerians, uh, Chad, right, Ethiopian, they are different, different people from different countries. They are not one and the same. So when you say African, you're not all inclusively including all people. Same with, with white people, right? You got the European country that is that uh, during the days of the dark ages were divided. It was a whole lot of fighting going on in Europe amongst the tribes. You know the history, I don't have to give you an education on that. You know the history of the, the Jukes and the Scandals and the Vandals, right? Um, those tribes that was constantly warring and fighting each other before the, the formation of the Kingdom of, of Britain was formed, the United Kingdom of Britain was formed. So. What I'm trying to get you to understand is, brothers and sisters, people of the world, we need to stop with this black and white because all, like I said, all so-called white people don't even like each other, really. On the surface, maybe. I worked around a, a person, she was from uh, Poland. She's Polish. She married a Russian man. Both of them from, are Europeans from Europe, right? One's from Poland, one's from Russia. She told me it was like night and day, her living with her husband and the way they were raising the children and his thoughts and views and how he, his lifestyle was totally different. Both of them are so-called white but a very different. And she said, she told me out of her own mouth, many days they had battles over the vast differences between the cultures. So don't fall for the trick by saying, oh, jump on the Trump bandwagon and anybody that, that stick with the Democrats, oh, remember, oh, uh, Bill Clinton put more people in prison than any other other president, okay? Now, prison bars is one thing, okay? But we've been in prison by every government system in various different ways, right? So, we can't just target the whole democratic, that's what I'm trying to say, here, here, here what I'm trying to say. We cannot incriminate a whole party of people because of the actions of one, right? It's just like saying, okay, Bill Clinton, uh, I'm going to use this for you so you can understand where I'm going. Bill Clinton is a white man, not a black man. Okay? So, sometimes people, on the basis of their people, they tend to have a favoritism that they show towards the people that look like them or that have similar uh, beliefs or traits or goals, right? So, people do that right for example if you had a say if we had a person who grew up in the hood 
and who struggled all their life. And now all of a sudden, they become the president of the United States. They're going to pass laws and bills and stuff like that that's going to affect people that grew up like they grew up. Okay? That's the reason why people expected Obama to do something that he, that, that he couldn't do or had no knowledge of. Okay? Uh, his upbringing and, and his wife Michelle's upbringing was different. Okay? Um, so we can't demonize a whole party on the basis of what people did. Okay? For example, I remember when Ronald Reagan was president. When Ronald Reagan was president. I'm gonna have to make a part two because I'm running out of time. I remember when Ronald Reagan was president. Uh, he passed a law to make it illegal for student loans to go away. So, because there was there was a time when people was uh, the banks were losing because people were defaulting on student loans. So. The law was passed under his administration that student loans um, would not go away until you pay it off. It will, it will be with you until you die. And many people have been done wrongly with that. I mean, I've known people that have borrowed minimum minimum dollars, but when that law was passed, that, can you imagine the amount of people that were sued in court for $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, etc.? because of this administration passing this bill under the Republican administration, right? And they passed the bill to, to, to make you have to be liable for that debt until you die. So all these companies, these finance companies, they took advantage of that and they started suing people in court, tagging on court fees, tagging on uh, collection fees, etc., etc., etc. Therefore, making a student loan, a five thousand dollars student loan, be now equivalent to a ten or even fifteen thousand dollars student loan. And those that may have had fifteen thousand, their loans may have been now thirty thousand dollars after tacking on interest and so forth. So now the people will go to their grave. Many people will go to their grave paying these student loans off. Not just the student loan itself, but all the other attorney fees tacked on to that. Now, Reagan did that, okay, under his administration. Under Barack Obama's administration, uh, he passed a bill that gave us the right to have student loan forgiveness throughout various different types of programs. And you have to research that and find out how. Through some programs, you can have the whole debt uh, 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 relinquished, or you may have it reduced, right? Under Obama's administration, right? So, Obama did good in certain areas, in areas that in which he can relate to. Obama was a college, college grad. I don't know how much college student loan debt he may have had, but I don't know if he incurred, uh, and I'm pretty sure because we're around the same age, he may have incurred some student loan debt that he's still paying. I have student loan debt that I, I'm still paying that I borrowed back in 1982. I'm still paying the student loan. <laughs> and I didn't borrow a whole lot of money, right? So, um, for people that, um, feel like that, oh, I'm, I'm going to join the Trump bandwagon because Trump Trump is for the people and Trump has brought in more jobs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now, Trump, Donald Trump inherited an economy when he went into office. Okay, so did Barack Obama. And you can look at the stats. You can go and look at it for yourself. Okay? So, Donald Trump may have created some jobs, but you have to ask yourself the question. People say Donald Trump created more jobs. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it toe to toe, right? What jobs, and be specific, did he create? You can deal with it on your local level. You can deal with it on the on the, uh, the, the state level and on the federal level. When people say that. I get tired of hearing people say he created jobs. Right, I put more people to work. Right, okay, 
putting people to work and creating jobs does not mean that they are having livable wages. Okay? So, as I close this video, and I may do a part two, I probably, probably will. But, Donald Trump is not the savior. Democrats is not the savior. Republicans is not the savior. Okay? If anybody's going to be successful in life and, and not be dependent, you have to be an independent thinker. You can't be consumed by uh, an individual that's in the office, okay? The people that you elect in the office should be somebody that you believe that they have the same similar mindset that you have about things, okay? But certainly not somebody who displays prejudice in their expression of words and how they handle people and don't have any tact in the nine yards. I'm going to talk too about the presidentialness in the next video. All right, that's all I got. Shalom, shalom.